What's up YouTube, in this video I'm going to sculpt Jezza and immortalize him into a figurine. Let's go! Good day, 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 oh, Hi, I am ZW, an accountant turned artist. If you have been following my channel, you would have known that this isn't the first time I've sculpted a YouTuber. And in that video, I asked for 1k subs and maybe a 1k likes on this video and I'll send him this figure. Obviously that didn't work, but let's try again. I wonder if Jezza fans are more interested in art. Hmm. The first step to any likeness sculpture is reference photos. So it's time to watch Jezza videos and snap some screenshots. The goal here is to get as many photos as possible from various angles. But mainly we need a neutral expression that is front on, three quarter view, and side profile. And it was easier to obtain Jezza reference photos because he doesn't just talk to the camera at the same angle like some YouTubers. You serious? Now that we've collected our references, it's time to move some digital clay in ZBrush. The initial stages of sculpting is really just moving clay. I'm adjusting the major features of the head according to the images that I've collected. The eyes, the ears, the shape of the skull, and of course, the nose. Just look at that nose! This thing is huge! When I feel like I've hit a bottleneck, I will switch gears to sculpt the hair. That will give me a better idea to the placement of his forehead and his ears. And it is actually quite relaxing to do, because it doesn't have to be 100% accurate. As long as I am able to capture the overall shape, I would consider it a success. When I get bored, I go back to sculpting the face. Jezza has a set of unique overhang eyebrows that makes him look angry, even though it's neutral. So that's an area that I had trouble with because I didn't want him to look too pissed off. Another area that I had trouble with was his mouth. Because YouTubers have to talk a lot to entertain you viewers, right? So his mouth was constantly moving and it was hard to find his mouth at a neutral position. Moving back to the hair, I usually switch my brain off and I just add various random strokes to the clay to mimic hairlines. It is also important to move the hair around to imitate the waviness of his hair. And have you noticed that Jezza's left eye is actually a little smaller than his right? I don't know, maybe the eyelids on the left is more droopy than the other, but that's at least what I can see by observing his photos. So that's how I decided to sculpt him. In higher resolution, I can go in deep and add some details, and that is when the likeness starts to get more obvious. After adding some pores and wrinkles, it is time to prep it for printing. To prep it for printing, we export the head to another program called Mesh Mixer. The only purpose here is to hollow it out, because if you think about it, there is a lot of negative space that is not needed for our purpose, and we don't need to waste material printing it. So as you can see, the grey out area is basically the part that will be hollowed out. And if it's hollow, we need to add some vent holes so that the resin won't get stuck in it. So it's time to print. I've actually talked about it in my Falcon video, so I'll just link you there at the top right corner. Jezza actually has the same exact printer I think, so I guess I don't have to talk about it. Let's move on. Hey, quick 5 seconds painting tip! This is how you paint the like button blue. Just click it! If you like this video, make sure to subscribe as well. It's free and you can change my life. Thanks for helping out and stay to the end. Enjoy the rest of the video. I suck at colouring pictures. So I really feared painting, but this is something I know I can do after practicing so much. So, so much. What I've learned is it's all about a bunch of different colours coming together in harmony but they have to be at the right place. So after the beige skin base has been applied, you want to mimic the blush and the blood vessels with some transparent red on areas like the cheeks, the nose, the eyes, and you want to have shadows on the low point and highlights on the high points. Something that I feel could make or break the whole sculpture would be the eyes. I do try my best to make sure his pupils are placed properly 
so that he doesn't look crossed eye. And after that's done, the most important thing is the gloss for the extra shine to bring it to life. So if you're one of my fans who have been with me since the start, you will know that I really try to attempt something different for each of my videos. So for this video, it's about custom t-shirts. You know how Jezza has merch? Well, one of the merch I really wanted but didn't have the money to buy was this. No, I'm kidding. It's this. So I really wanted to recreate it in 1-6 scale. It's really simple. I took the t-shirt image from the merch shop, placed it in Photoshop, selected the image and deleted the rest. I scaled it down to about 4cm on each side, flipped the image, you will know why later on. So you want to print it on an iron-on transfer paper. I didn't really film the process because I was just I was still trying to figure shit out. But this is the result. After ironing it on a 1-6 scale cotton t-shirt, the flip image has successfully transferred onto the shirt the right way up. That's how you make your own custom Jezza 1-6 scale merch. Well now it's assembly time. One good thing about sculpting YouTubers is that they don't have a specific wardrobe that I need to replicate. So I basically bought some regular 1-6 scale clothing that I thought I've seen Jezza worn before. And here's a black hoodie, a denim jeans, some black shoes, and of course our lovely custom merch. Not to forget the main highlight of the video, the head sculpt. They will all come together with this regular 1-6 scale body. Jezza has been a great inspiration for creating this YouTube channel. The fact that he could enjoy doing art as a living is something I've never thought would be possible until now. That is why I decided to sculpt him, not just because he's famous and I want his fans to subscribe to my channel, but if that's what you want to do, go ahead. Well, next week it's all about Loki, and here's a little preview. If you have enjoyed this YouTuber special, I also made Davy 504 figurines over here. Otherwise, you can visit this playlist and you can see all of my other creations. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next week.